Hello, welcome to this uh, level six video within my energetic system series. My name is Allie with Amory Speaks. And this video is going to be a bit of an alchemist level discussion. Um, I have noted a bit in this, uh, in previous videos in this level here at six, that this is sort of the closure, the finale. Um, the sort of end of term uh, discussions and so it is kind of uh, pertinent that you have seen and done the workings that are offered throughout the whole energetic system series if you're not uh, familiar and you're brand new welcome thank you just for clicking and listening um, and your audience I appreciate it uh, you can definitely listen and perhaps you'll get a couple of things but uh, most of it is probably going to just sound like a crazy person and that I'm a bit like out there talking very metaphorically and generally <laughs> and in fact I'm speaking very uh, nuanced and defined but because you'll be unfamiliar with uh, the previous discussions and the content in general. It's, it will go mostly over your head. That's okay. And if you have a reference of um, energetic alchemy, of balancing positive and negative, how stuff like that works, uh, or if you're familiar with uh, the Taurus, sacred geometries, the flower of life, how... Um, we build out and create dimensionality um, and whether that's like a physics background or a medical metaphysical background um, you you might get a little bit more indifferent you know than somebody who's just kind of newly woken up and looking for uh, information on spiritual systems and stuff for, or energy uh, however you've discovered this welcome um, but yeah, time better spent and please, if you are here, uh, I hope to encourage you to check out the level one stuff because it's, uh, obviously it's my content so I, and, and information that I have received that I've worked hard on, but uh, I do find it just so crucial to bettering life and to giving yourself better systems and working better systems within your life and seeing better results and who doesn't want that right and through maybe these 50 something videos I don't know over a year or less I don't know how many months I've been doing these sort of things but um, and working through this portion of content of download that I received it's maybe a year um, I have seen such growth such of increase in productivity, beneficial uh, streamlining of different functionalities, different ways I look at life, different operations that I do in my day-to-day -day things like that just come together so much more simply, enjoyably, uh, and yeah, overall beneficially that it, uh, I've been so motivated to share this, this is what the whole thing's built upon. Um, and if you are seeking better service for yourself and others, then uh, yeah, I highly suggest taking your time and going down to level one and working through that and learning all about the foundations and learning about what systems are and how they work and how there's two different, well, mostly seemingly, two different ways of positive oriented or negatively oriented operation uh, energy exchanging. You know, everything's energy. So anyways, that's my preamble. That is my little, uh, you know, posting here for myself, my marketing scheme. Um, always free anyway. So, you know, there's no, there's no true profiteering behind it. Um, in true service and in honoring what I'm talking about and walking the walk, right? Uh, I will hold myself accountable to always offer my service freely first. Things that I have created and I enjoy to create, I am paid in the energetics of making the creation, 
you know, um, and anybody who creates or makes anything, you know, they'll have a more familiarity with that work and with the benefits that you get from it. But you can even use a similar metaphor like uh, exercise, you know, um, through practice of doing a thing, it, there's certain benefits that come with it that make you feel uh, better and stronger and operate better. So anyways, for, for all of us who are not new and for, for those of you who have uh, worked your way through your system's work and are honoring that stuff and discovering more within it, um, let's talk here at level six what I'd like to talk about um, and continue on talking, of course, because we have our, I've already brought forth the spirit and we've talked a bit about the spirit layering and just uh, sort of the overall potentiality <laughs> of the manyness within this third part of you and of us and of the working. Uh, we also touched on how the spirit itself is also reflected and it operates out there in every other person. Living being, living creature, uh, and in fact in ways that we don't really have sort of vocabulary to express completely but in an infinite intelligent sort of way uh, etheric coursing through everything it is in all things it is in the molecule of, of every component of the air around us it's in your cells it's every every uh, layer <laughs> is basically its own ener energetic to read all right a, a bubble of consciousness that can be inhabited and does work and it has systems and functionality and when you choose to inhabit it you realize that oh my gosh it's a world of its own you know but not only is it a world of its own it has workings to keep itself going and establish whatever purpose it's you know doing there's uh, others that it serves there's others around it that it does work with um, and interacts with and is a part of and then that great layer you know, expands into a certain amount of consciousness in a realm that only that working inhabits. And then there's yet larger and smaller taking you in and out, right? Um, <coughs> and so every single layer, as we've talked about, has the great reflection of the three. It has the mind, the body, and the spirit, right? It has the inner workings, the external workings, and this sort of lemniscatic, ever-flowing, uh, creation of the two, the third part of it though, because it's it's more than just the two. And uh, the spirit in itself, when we talk about it, as far as I, you know, I'm going to speak here in a means of knowing and expressing what I feel. Uh, now, I reserve the right to be wrong. <laughs> and of course, if you're not, you know, if you're not new here, you'll know. I don't really stake a lot of uh, sticks in the stand and try to build up uh, anything falsely too sturdy. You know, I, I have houses of cards here and I understand that they're, you know, very uh, tediously placed and uh, sketchy. But I just want to talk about overall presentation of things that I'm working through and have kind of combed out and received. From what I feel is the spirit layer and is the connection. Um, as I said in the last videos, I hope to have the infographic walkthrough 101 soon. I have a lot going on in my own life uh, at the moment and uh, not only that but if, uh, if anybody has sort of watches my other videos and things you'll know I've had some uh, like poison ivy issues and some other sort of catalytic uh, aggravations that I've been dealing with that have also deterred me from really being able to type and write <laughs> um, comfortably so things have been uh, pushed on the back burner a bit for healing which happens and uh, when I make a more streamlined video set to go with the course books after I finish this real series hopefully you know I won't have more of these sort of personal update notes and those and that when I have that full offering at a later time that will be more of like a segregated real type type of learning offering but these I create to be more personal and this is my secondary walkthrough of the material you know um, so 
it's beneficial for my learning and my teaching as well as to come around next time to really get a better teaching opportunity from all of this. Uh, you know, so thank you for listening and hearing and also understand that what I'm talking about is nothing set in stone and in fact it could be misinterpreted and it most certainly contains distortions of my own personal biases and uh, and whatever. But this is, you know, just general information to help us all and encourage us all to do more discovery within our own system layers and bosses and hear what they have to say. You know, not to tag it down to what mine have said one time and say yours have to say the same thing all the time. <laughs> you know, no, it's just about this is an example of a possibility here. And we're, we're infinite potentiality playing itself out. We get to make choices. That's our power. That's our gifts here to create momentum and choice and to, to manifest and move and build and change and grow. <laughs> so uh, remembering and saying and all of that, um, what I'm going to bring forth here and talk about with this discussion is going to be a lead up to what I hope to really cement in better with some infographics and uh, diagrams uh, to talk about the flow of communication especially. Um, that I feel like is super helpful to see what I'm talking about as we talk about it because the reflections echo each other and sort of like this. Just like the Torito flows in this way and that way and then there's the inner vortex that's doing the opposite thing. And without seeing the infographics, like if you are part of the audience who has and you know the time that we've walked through to show with the arrows and all the icons to show energetic processes that are taking place and the directionality the energetics is moving, the work it's doing in each portion of the Taurus, right? The Taurus is a tool. Um, and it's doing things, <laughs> you know, it's not just a picture standing there pretty like pulsating. It's actually the pulsating is work being done. Um, but, but anyways, the, this, I'm bringing this forth to just keep reminding us and to bring forth in myself also like the deep connection and reverence that all things, um, are echoes and, uh, patterns. And that's how we know the truths, and that's how we kind of follow the truths within ourselves. Um, now, the spirit layer flow, uh, I mean the whole flow, <laughs> flows through the spirit layer. Uh, lastly and firstly, it's that zero point that I've talked about before. Um, and that zero point in itself is sort of like a portal and it allows uh, lots of communication on all different levels. So it's sort of like the jump space that creator consciousness, the observer, gets to go through and has direct connection to always, can kind of like speak a language through, reverberate through. Um, and also it's like a doorway. Um, or a lens. I, I have many infographics about the lens and that it works like a lens sort of that you can just watch through. But as you're watching through it, like it's like you become part of it. And then you become able to inhabit that layer that I had just talked about, right? And, and uh, have conversations with bosses and things. Now the spirit layer, it has, it's, it's undefinable and it's ever exchanging and changing because it has within it what I like to call uh, imagination space. And that is basically just like emptiness that can be anything. It's thought world. It is uh, like if you've ever seen The Matrix, most of you probably have, that white room that they're all, that they're in and, you know, um, Morpheus tells Neo like here and this is it. This is, we build anything we want in here. It's like the construct or whatever. Um, imagination space is organically like this. And I hate to tag in kind of these negatively aligned, uh, incorrect inversions and distortions because those are hijacked, manipulated cages within imagination space they want you to play in. You know, they want you caught up in this area over there. Um, not realizing that, you know, your creation space is infinite. All of ours is. Um, and this is also the beauty and difficulty in understanding why 
and why I say this is an alchemetic level working here. It's hard to start to step back out of first person view and out of this really tight focus we have, a very personal, very emotional and direct experience uh, wrapped up in inner world and mind and um, in, in the external direct world around us. We get very uh, lassoed into it and, um, and therefore entangled in those energetics and the conversations in their systems. And their system communications become very tied into our own and it's hard to even disentangle to figure out where the issues in productivity or the issues in communication are within solely within your own stuff because you're so entangled in even just family unit around you, right? Um, and to understand that there's these communication layers like the spirit layer that is like a, a meshing or lattice work and it's meant to be entangled and it is in continual conversation with all because it's the great bond and holding of all of it. It's something like ether on this different level, this quantum physics level, tiny, you know, than, tinier than thoughts. <laughs> you know, um, the spirit layer has an, is, is part of that. But it has many of its own pieces and layers to pull back from as well because each of your own operations and systems incorporate their own spirit layer and have their own version of spirit box. And when we look at our self as a whole system and we work to um, we work to step back and disentangle a bit from external conversation, right, and just talk about the internal world, internal system workings, and what our main, you know, like I talk about the main bosses, right? And we just talked about our own Taurus as ourselves. The main spirit, uh, that core entity and layer within us is mostly stunted. It's the first thing that's been attacked and the first thing that's sort of cut off um, in the internal workings. It's highly activated in the external workings when we have this inverted um, inorganic negative systems running, right? And we have a negative uh, torpedo service pulling inwards. The spirit is highly uh, focused on external happenings out there. Like all of the focus is on what's going on out there. And the internal one is lost, and it's a whisper, and it doesn't really get noticed. And that's why we neglect ourselves a lot. And that's how and why the seeding and allowance of self-neglect and hatred, unworthiness, abandoning your inner child, or not allowing yourself to love yourself, uh, or love your life, or, or just, you know, whatever the thing is, and things are. There's many, right? But this is why and how it happens, and it's crucial to the makeup of the workings, the negative alignment of but when we realize that we can get out of that and we break out of this and we work on the inner core, that's the first thing that we work on and heal. And that's the first thing that does the shift within us. It has the flipping of the vortex. It does at that zero point alignment, connecting to your sovereign eternal flame. It lights up every layer um, from the inside out, from this inner core spirit layer, which is the inner side, right? And like I talked about the flow, um, it's like spirit body, uh, spirit, mind, body, mind, body, spirit, spirit, mind, body, mind, body, spirit. And it comes from the external back internal. And every time it passes through that spirit layer, it's hitting that sort of portal to be able to dive deeper into consciousness or to dive externally into collective consciousness, into the void into the external spiritual layers that we've talked about. And when you become uh, more aware and you hold your boundaries better and you have a good system running, you have much better contact with collective out there. You have a be much better and stronger boundary of external spirit in the conversation and you know what is yours and what isn't. Uh, you can start to realize in thought world and in uh, interference out there of what's yours and what isn't. And when things come in or intrude or attempt to infringe upon your space and mental 
or emotional energetic spaces through those other layers through the spirit layer and mind layer and even through the body language uh, the cymatic reverences that come through that we don't really uh, hear you know or speak but they're passed along right they're interpreted better and we stand up for our sovereign right uh, to life and to our opinions and to our uh, great purpose and our destination our right to be uh, when we have good conversation and when we have good connection a recognition of these conversations um, now what I want to talk about here um, before I close out this video because I can't go much longer this morning is the spirit realm, the collective imagination space, these sort of external places um, that we can get into and and what they mean for us. Now, uh, I'm going to get definitely more into this with the infographics so that I can really tie the parallels um, to the different versions of the systems along with what I'm talking about. Um, but the spirit layer in itself is the great reflection of the flow. It is and contains, whole, well, it holds space for the containment of the external working, your external service and all the external to read all, as well as the internal vortex and all the internal workings of your internal system. And in the creation of that holding of the space and of being the great observer, uh, note taker, manager, it has this third party uh, view. It has a greaterness to it, an otherness to it, a mystery to it that's not quite you, that's bigger than you. And when I mean you, I mean this incarnated physical body you, your life here now in, in time and space. I, um, because it is your eternal spark, it is part of the before and after of you. It is the higher self you, it is the God source of you. It is that bright gift and birthing of conception in life that you own, that is part of you, that you'll return to after, that you're responsible for caring for now and holding it alive and keeping bright and passing on. Uh, the spirit is a great reflection of that and it has direct contact with that. And we should honor it as such. And we should remember that holding of space to the unknownness, the ever possible potentiality. You know, holding a curious uh, mystery seeking of unknowing, you know, a, a humbleness of you don't know it all. We, none of us know it all. N no person, no down here in consciousness jammed into 4D into these body sets, living a human life to evolve and ascend, can contain it. It's not meant to be that way. <laughs> Doesn't fit. You know, it's a, it's a circle peg, a uh, square peg trying to fit into a circle hole. Um, But we're both, remember, you're, you're the peg and the hole, and so it doesn't matter that it doesn't fit. In fact, they're both beautiful as is, so honor them as such. Stop trying to force them to fit together in ways they don't. Honor them and, and see them for what they are for and allow them. And in fact, they'll tell you, oh, I'm meant to actually be over here, and oh, did you notice all these pieces over here? Because all of those actually do. But you've been so pigeonholed and focused on this current section that, that this has been blocked. Take a breath, look around you, listen to the other, to the spirit, allow receivership of things from outside of you to come into you and be of service to you. Uh, and I talk a lot and do a lot of practice of the breath work in this working because it's such a great parallel and metaphor um, on how we breathe and how to allow everything to come in, external, all of these things, <laughs> molecules floating around, whatever you want to call them and see them as, it doesn't even... It doesn't matter. You could name them anything in your own that you want to, but there's more than just, you know, the pieces of molecules anyway that are out there in the external world, and they're coming in on your breath and becoming part of you. They're giving your cells energy and life 
power to do what they need to do. Whether you want to call it like a, a burst of ATP or you want to see it as the oxygen enlivening the cells and being able to take away the CO2 and knowing such nuanced processes like that, um, those things are markers, they're helpful, you know? They're the symptomatic truths manifesting in physicality. But knowing and understanding that the truth in the thought of the thought world happening beforehand, the knowing of that is going to happen anyways, that it does happen, um, whether you know the words or not, is the truth of it, right? Just like um, math. It's like when you start to understand deeper understandings of numbers and math and growth and we start to learn, wait a minute, like humans didn't make math, <laughs> you know? And it's not happenstance and coincidence that like we're making some kind of like formulas uh, up. It is the math. <laughs> it is as such because it was designed as such. Um, and, and we're just witnessing it and creating verbiage of descriptions to describe things that are already doing and being and happening. Um, and no matter your background and no matter your understandings or your prerequisites and all this kind of stuff, you still have the divine knowledge within you. You can still go doing amazing seeking and find just the same valuable worthy answers as somebody with a master's or a doctorate, their, their nose in the book, somebody who's been researching for 25 years, you know. Uh, we, we have proof in, in knowing even ancient, uh, looking at ancient texts and uh, Vedic yogis and things, the ancient uh, Eastern medicines and stuff. Just now is science starting to catch up and be able to have verbiage to explain those things that they knew and, th and they were taught from within. Um, the being taught from within is what we'll go into later and talk about in the coming times. Um, and it's amazing to me the parallels of uh, so many different teachers and great prophets, gurus, ascended masters, um, all our favorite people, you know, they all say the same thing. And it's becoming so much more obvious to me, uh, th especially through the systems work. Wow, even I can find systems jargon <laughs> to plainly put down exactly what Jesus was speaking in terms and language that seems so disconnected and separate, so apart and archaic um, and out of date and different from my own life and being here that I've lived through. And yet now I see, wow, like a, a bridge connecting all of it. It's, it's truly amazing. It's been so beneficial. Um, but what I really wanted to just kind of wrap up and close with um, is like all of the spirit realm, spirit world, whatever you want to call this, that out there. And perhaps it has to do with fifth uh, density, other dimensionalities, sixth, seventh, we have uh, entities and higher beings inhabiting that area. And perhaps, you know, our versions of our higher selves are reflected out there, casting down, doing work into here. And it's all a great connection. Um, our spirit layer has that language to speak with all of that. And when you learn it and when you sit with it, you can receive information direct from perhaps people. And maybe you receive and have conversations with uh, characters or archetypes like, uh, you know, uh, people who mean something to you. Everybody's different and receives different messages from different um, backgrounds, personalities, archetypes, and workings. Uh, God speaks to us in our own unique ways and through ways that are distinctly personal and Im will impact us influentially from our own walk up to that very moment. You know, uh, that layer knows us best, God knows us best. The before and after 
uh, has a divine flow and connection through all of time and space. It's, you know, it's not linear. And so having a great knowing and faith in that layer, and also this taps into the mystery of the unknown, just accepting that and having faith that I don't need to figure out how perhaps like the mechanics of all of that. If I enjoy discovering along that avenue and it fuels me in a positive way, and I like sharing with others, having conversations in that way, and um, it's an act of free service for me to give freely, and it lights me up to discover explanations and descriptions of that and see parallels in, in a very defined sort of scientific way, go for it, love it, invigorate it, inspire others to do it. But if it's a negative type of calling and seeking where you're jamming uh, facts into your opinion, making them fit, and then expecting everyone else, they have to see it that way too. And if they don't, you know, you want to critique them and make them or have something wrong with it or attack that, you know, and force it and not allow this, the discovery of manyness to really take place as it should you should realize what kind of battle you're facing and it's not with that other person. <laughs> you're trying to take on infinity. You're trying to take on God's expansion, the discovery of potentiality. You're trying to wrestle with infinity and why would you do that to yourself when you're an eternal being? You're setting yourself up for a never-ending struggle <laughs> in a negative loop that is self-fulfilling prophecy of negativity that you're gonna bundle yourself up in a rat's nest of a mess. Uh, full of momentum that needs feeding and needs more always. It tricked itself that it needs more always. <laughs> you know, um, but instead if you embrace and accept and settle into and embrace uh, your abundant surplus that, it's, that you're just here and that it is something unknown and you can relax into that and to know that the after effects are going to be beautiful and miraculous and wonderful uh, and that it will be worth it in the end no matter what your journey's been chosen this time you've chose it for a purpose um, you've been chosen for a reason you you know um, and the spirit layer knows that and it feels the truth in it and that little reverberation, whether it's like a rising of the goose pimples or it's a thing inside your chest or your stomach, tingling wherever, top of the head, you know, it could just, and it could be other synchronistic nuances that pop up for you as a confirmations of truth. And yes, your spirit speaking to you, that spirit layer talking back to you, saying, I hear you. We are there. It is real. You know, let's work together. Let's do it. Um know that that's there and that those beings and entities and whether it's a direct ancestor of yours in spirit realm whether you like to see it as your higher self all of that and others you can feel free to explore that area create your imagination space as uh, as alive and vibrant and full of as much and many myths as you'd like it's infinite it'll never run out it's always there you, there's no you know, marker that your cloud storage is going to end. That's such a hijacked negative hierarchy. And when you start to realize the language and mirroring and the control loop of lassoing that they've done with the internet and cloud service and all of that jazz, <laughs> um, and you see the great play on language and theater that that is, the mockery and inversion of it is, because we do have an organic divine never-ending version that's just as available always potential there for us that you could dive right into and you are a part of no matter whether you like to admit it or not because those you know as much as you don't use those tiny connections of the spirit they're always there they'll never go because they're part of the before and after they're a makeup of this whole entity here the aliveness of reality of the building of this octave you're a part of it they're a part of it good and bad and all of it and so uh, it'll take time until they remember or till that whole bundle fills us out enough that they don't have what they think they need to keep going what they think they need to take in to hide from the things within when they can't hide from those things anymore and they must face them then they realize oh, I was strong enough the whole time or I had what I needed or it is given to me and brought to me by those uh, whom I thought had you know turn their back on me or 
or whatever the case might be. You never know in those rock bottom moments the miracles that are given to you um, by Spirit, by God, because they're different and unique to each one of us and to each one of our rock bottoms because they are many and they do happen. Um, so if you're facing them, know you're not alone and it's not it. It's not the end um, because each one is a rebirth and a renewal remember it isn't the bottom a rock bottom well that you're stuck down in waiting for a ladder for another to come and climb out it's a remembering of the spirit layer it's a remembering of mother earth and your great purpose underneath you and then the well will fill with water it will seep right out of the ground all of a sudden and you will remember oh yeah <laughs> it's, it's just a game it's just life it's it's a gift it's here. There's no going anywhere until the end. And wait a minute, it's not the end yet. I'm still here. So clearly it's there for a reason. And with that acknowledgement of reason, that sovereign remembrance, that's the flame igniting. That's the light in the room. That's your tiny spark, the little bit of water that helps crack open the aquifer and burst your well. And you rise up out, you know, never needing a bucket, never needing a pull up or anything. Um, The, the last thing, and, and I keep sort of dancing around it, and I'm going to close because I've been talking too long. Um, I'm just going to mention, and we'll get into this later, is that, and I've talked a little bit about the, the negative, and there's a collective reflective happening in the third party out there, in, in, in our spirit layer. It's a shadow, we have shadow, we have collective shadow. And with there's a play on the light happening. They have sort of a way of wrangling and lassoing sort of the heartstrings of the light to make it angled in sort of ways to, to be seeking in ways that they can play off of and build their shadow. And that's been happening and ha was more conducive and more fertile for the decades before, hundreds of years before, the Piscean Age, and, and all of this time, previous historical events and things. We had different workings needed for, for the whole world and for each of us, you know, uh, by extension individually. We're, we're in a threshold movement into new age, into this changing. And with that is really coming new solutions, new workings. We have to look at things differently because we're presented in different ways now. And it's not going to be the same as before. You know, they don't come back the same way twice. Things don't happen always the same way. And so we need to really embrace the newness. We need to be listening and acknowledging that, like I said, the great mystery of the unknown. Seeing the real happenings of the present now and addressing what's currently really taking place and where the needs are. Hearing what they really are and working for true harmonious solutions for all of the things, you know, not excluding and secluding things for easy, quick workings and solutions that are beneficial for sort of most of the collective here because this will do that and we'll deal with this later. That at the time for all of that's over. There's too much light. There's too many of us. There's too much work to be done now. They have gotten too much of a wrangle in in the collective uh, shadowed areas that they have a bit too much pull. It's really about time that, and we have enough light too, that, you know, they're in cornered areas to where they're crumbling. <laughs> uh, but this is also the point where it's a very um, tightrope because they do have a bit more strength. And so as you and as us, we work to gain light and we're better alchemists, we're doing greater work, more positive, we're noticing more poking, more uh, strength being uh, sort of to disrupt uh, the things that were happening, the good things that are happening. Um, more disturbances or perhaps even might seem like they're sort of gaining momentum in certain areas in the external especially because they have the most power in, in the external. The external reflective, remember I talk about the three layers, the internal, your direct, and the external worlds. You have no influence in the external world. The individual we can witness and observe out there. Our spirit layer has, you know, an influence out there and has a connect out there. But as our individual, we're not, our makeup isn't meant to be out there. We're in a first person view. We're meant to do things in this, in this sort of um, 
first person player mode. You know, we're not meant to be playing out in this other third person view. It's there to bounce out of and to hold space for the whole work and to, to provide observance for us to step into and out of to create balance for the whole. But we're not meant to tip it over and be out there all the time. It creates an imbalance. And I talked about that in the last episode a bit about being too spiritual, you know, about being too much in the astral and getting lost in time and all of that. And, uh, and that's what happens when we get lost in the collective reflective out there and you're lost in the external world and we get wrapped up in external social media, we get wrapped in, up in news and television propaganda, in uh, holly weird things and all that jazz. I can't stop saying that stupid saying. Um, <laughs> it is, see, and this is it. There's infringing, infring, um, thought entities and uh, encounters that come in from the external. And as we become more conscientious and we work more with the spirit layer and we have better language with it, uh, we also have to work on the boundaries of it because there is sort of this highly uh, fueled momentum in the negative overlay right now. And they're sort of firing all, all bars go Every sort of thing that every weapon, every mechanism, every little thing is firing, every little gadget and thing they have to push and to sort of sort of impede on all good beings and all good goodness trying to really go with the flow and continue with the change that's happening. They have uh, everything full steam ahead right now trying to make every little thing burst and break in any direction because it's their last, very last, uh, get, you know, holding on, thrall, death thralls. And I notice it in my own world. And many people that I talk to noticing it too. And I mean, obviously we see the collective happening. I mean, it's been nothing but uh, a gaping wound pussing out and flowing out um, really for the last four years. It's just continuation, right? And uh, I'm not going to really get into too much of that external stuff right now. Because as I said, the real work and the true power is in the internal world. And yes, the direct world. The direct world's where we get the practice and the momentum and the work at, in our own direct worlds. Um, but there's huge distractions and on purpose out there in the external. And um, be wary and mindful of the pokings and aggravations that do come with doing the work and come with being uh, more in light body, more enlightened, having more positive flow. There's a great re uh, reverberance that's created, and I talk a lot about that. Um, there's this general boundary that keeps away, you know, all of the lower level negativity things that are nowhere near your uh, light, nowhere near your charge base. Um, but when we're talking about the external being full of a lot of charge bases of negativity that are highly charged right now, the bullies in, in the schoolyard, they feel a little bit more brazen. So they're, they're a bit more willing to take on sort of the stronger uh, people. Um, so we need to hold our ground and stand our ground more and more importantly. Uh, and not allow it to cause us to become them, cause it to make us turn our systems negative. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make us cross over to their side, become big bullies with them, you know, so that they, they don't have a stand against anymore and they just can continue on with the negativity. That's all they really want at the end of the day is to just stagnate and hold, continue on with their little bit of power, make sure it grows a little bit more so they can continue on a little more. And anything that's conducive to that, they're okay with. But anything that threatens that is, is the issues. So remember as you're doing your work and you're uh, monitoring these systems and speaking with the bosses and things that you invigorate your sovereignty in a strong, unconditional love way. And in a way that respects the sovereign rights of all others. You have to respect their choice to be the bully in the yard. You can't be that one that goes over and, ah, you, why are you that way? Uh, I'm going to beat you up to teach you a lesson or let's put you in a locker, teach you a lesson. Everybody be pick on this guy now, I say, because he did this to us. You know, and also we have to watch out for the martyrdom, for the savior complex, where we think we know best for others' spiritual journey and for the collective in general. And we think we need to go over and talk to befriend that bully or find out why they are that way and fix them and set to, like entangle our love with them and start to go to trying to make them see a way and walk a path of some sort. We have to respect and honor their choice as it is. 
and just say, dude, I don't know why you are that way, but uh, let's not be like that. And get over here and do your thing. Don't purposely disclude, disclude it or make an anti-bully thingy. You do what you like to do. Make your club about what you like to make and make it good and positive and build on the structures that you like to do, like Buckminster Fuller always says. You know, you do just go do you and just leave that. And it'll crumble. That bully will be lonely at some point, you know, or he'll continue to pick on somebody and or other people out there. And then, yeah, maybe you just help, you, you, you know, you get the little other kids that he's picking on and get them away from them. You rescue them. But you don't have to do anything about that bully. That bully's on its own path and will figure it out. You know, or it won't. But at the end of that bully's life, whatever it has chosen, we have to remember and honor that that is that's a fr fractal reflection of God, just like you are, has just as much right at its choices and discovery as you had yours. It chose the way it chose for reasons. Unknown to us, we have to respect them, right? Just like all that other stuff I talked about before. It's the same but a metaphor in a different working now. We have to respect their choices and honor them as such because they hold space in that great collective. In, in the negative and positive, the gradient of the whole spectrum of the mosaic picture that we're creating the whole of. It's a darker reflection or it's a color you don't like or a shape that disagrees with you or perhaps it's something that irks you or whatever. But um, it has just as much sovereign right to do that. And in fact, because it holds that, whatever shape it is, it's contrasting to this more beautiful one that you can now honor and see a great spectrum between what you don't like and what you do like. And that working is the real truth of it. That's the spirit of the work. <laughs> that's the reason the spirit has the holding of the space. And that's the work the spirit's looking to create, the overall lesson of the whole, the moral of the story. And the spirit is the continuation of the whole, and that's why it's connected to the great before and after. And that's why it speaks to all others, and it speaks to your spirit, to, to, to God, and through all every layer. It can go right through the body's boss, to the mind's boss, and into spirit, and through all um, the layers of consciousness as well. Because uh, it is a part of the whole. <laughs> now, I have gone on for way too long. I have to wrap it up. Um, I just really wanted to bring in imagination space and the collective conscious collective, uh, the Akashic, whatever people like to call that out there, the spirit realm, the astral world, all of those sort of external places and spaces are um, a part of that spirit layer and um, also sort of this part of this third external world that I have already mentioned sort of in previous working. Um, so be mindful of the other entities and it's so important that we, you know yourself before you go exploring out there. This is why I really started the whole series with the inner vortex and why we built up the knowing of your Torito and your own systems first. We talked about all the exchanges and getting a good positive flow, owning that sovereignty and even learning how to do working with your own direct world in that sovereign space, honoring theirs, getting good practice for weeks at that, you know, learning the language of that before we even start to delve in, dip our toes into what that external is and what takes place out there and learning what is not ours and what is so that we know what's coming in and what's attempting infringement because honest, positive, freely given service out there is just let free out there. It's free for you to grab hold of and integrate into your world however you choose. There's no micromanager behind it. There's no questions. There's no strings attached, no anchoring or an entanglement of sorts. You'll never have an energetic thing saying, did you receive that? What do you think of that? Can I have that? How did you get that? Can you pay me for this? Oh, remember I gave you that before? There will never be a follow-up on a truly freely given and offered thing out there in the world, in the third world. And you won't feel. Remember, sometimes it's, an, it's a callback echoing. It isn't an actual feeling of third-party uh, interference or... Um, checking in so to speak you know sometimes it's something within you that is a, a ding for that I need that I need to go back to that oh what's that oh remember that it's a seeding like think of it like addiction how it just kind of 
calls from almost inside of you to do make you do something external. Those are the, th the thought uh, things that you need to be wary of and to question and to run through your filter of sovereignty and say, is this for my highest good? Um, simply by asking that, it will dissipate most negative things or you'll have an immediate feedback that's like, look, no. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of that. Oh, man, I'm trying to get out of that habit. Or, oh, I didn't, ha you know. It will be that sort of catch yourself thing. And discard that, let it go, and just say no thank you, you, you know, um, breathe it away, <laughs> uh, and keep moving forward, and just seeking better, uh, you know, that's the teachings for today, that's where I'm going to leave it for now, uh, hopefully I will be back within a week or so with the infographic walkthrough, so we can really talk about the filters and the layers and how we can filter communication as it does the flow through. And we can really talk about moving from things, how they move from external service into the internal world and how they're monitored and how the energy alchemy polarity charge is uh, transacted and balanced. Um, but I feel like, like I said, that stuff is done much better with the visual walkthrough. So hopefully I will be back soon with those. Uh, forgive me if it takes me a little while and you're anticipating them, um, but uh, I hope to be back shortly. Thank you as always for your audience and your time. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for listening and I will catch you next time.